Hi, my name's Andy, and uh, what I want to do is show you how you can use a capacitor to block one signal and admit another. In order to do this, I'm also going to use a, a couple of inductors or little coils. Uh, these are actually, they're not ferrite cores, they're, they actually have iron cores. So they're little chokes. I don't want to go too deep into the theory of inductors as uh, this series is called about capacitors, uh, not inductors. And you'll, you'll note it's called about capacitors and not all about capacitors because I don't know everything there is to know about capacitors but I'll try and share a little bit that I do know with you. Anyway, if you stick with me, uh, you might just find it interesting. You probably know that uh, a capacitor will block DC. And that's true, of course, uh, but it comes with some conditions attached. Uh, let me show you. Uh, here I've got an old Morse key. Uh, we've got our 9 volt battery and uh, I've got a, a, a beat up old meter and uh, what I'm going to do is connect those in series oh and um, by the way I'm also going to connect these two inductors in series uh, they serve no function at this stage um, but I just want them to be included in the circuit all, all along Okay, so this is the circuit diagram of how I've got things connected up. From the positive side of the battery, I come across um, to the left, to the top of the choke there, and then down through the choke to the positive terminal of the meter. The negative terminal is connected to the bottom of the choke on the right-hand side, and that, the other end of that choke is connected to one side of the Morse key and the other side of the Morse key is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. It's a 9 volt battery and the meter is on the 10 volt range. So these are what the, uh, the bits and pieces look like in reality. Uh, from my battery I connect through to the uh, little choke to the meter, from the other side of the meter to a choke through the key into the battery. As I press the key so you'll see the needle swing across uh, to 9 volts. OK, so no surprises there. It does exactly what you'd expect. OK, so this is just a, a closer view of uh, that setup. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this capacitor into the circuit. So I'm going to disconnect the battery there. Uh, this is a uh, 4.7 microfarad capacitor. Uh, so I'm just going to add that into the circuit. There, so that's in series and uh, I'll show you the circuit diagram as it is now. So this is a circuit diagram. Okay, so we know that a capacitor will block uh, DC voltage and this is DC so when I press the key if you think you know what's going to happen uh, take a dollar out of your pocket or a pound out of your pocket and uh, say if I don't get it right I promise to send Andy this uh, this money only kidding so when I press the key if we're going to block DC there'll be no meter movement but watch you see that little kick that was because I'm still holding the key down. That was because the capacitor was discharged. Now, as I close the key, there's no further action. The meter's not moving. But if I discharge that capacitor, let's find a bit of wire for a short circuit. Okay, I'll just discharge that. There. And again, when I press the when I press the key. The capacitor charges, and you'll see it, it, it's got nothing to do with the inductors. Um, uh, I'll come on to inductors another day, maybe. But it was simply the fact that the capacitor was discharged. As I said to you at the beginning, 
capacitors block DC but they come with conditions and that's one of the conditions and maybe I'll go into that in greater detail but I just wanted to illustrate that so now we can see that that capacitor is blocking the DC current the direct current the meters not moving I say okay that's that's something and nothing stick with me and I'll show you how it gets interesting so what I've got here is uh, an old radio chassis it works so we're going to use that and I've extended the speaker out uh, on a bit of wire so I'm going to push the radio out of the way uh, but that's that's going to be giving us a signal that we're going to bring down through here so that's Turn that off a minute. Don't mess with live electrics. If you get across the mains, you get across the voltages in this radio, it, it will kill you, it will wipe you out as sure as if you've been hit by an express train. So do be very careful. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, cut this wire and I'm going to put a connector capacitor in series. So uh, I'll unplug the radio from the mains. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just turned the, the focus light and uh, just turned the volume down there. So what I've done now is I've put uh, that capacitor uh, in series with the speaker. Okay, and uh, you see it still works. Okay, so stick with it because it does get interesting, honest. Oh, what I should have pointed out, of course, is uh, that capacitor is actually passing the audio frequency, whereas it was blocking the DC um, voltage. I've now cut the wire again, I'll get a close-up, and I've put another capacitor in series. So this is, uh, again, a 4.7, if you can see that upside down. And, so it's, and that's the other one, the first one. And again, so the signal's coming from the uh, from the radio down the wire through this capacitor, through this wire, through this capacitor, and through to the speaker. So again, no surprises there. Uh, now I'm going to connect up the uh, the Morse key. To it. Uh, incidentally, anybody that's interested, that's uh, an Elliot Brothers uh, key uh, from London. Uh, but before I do that, I'll give you a circuit diagram. This is the circuit diagram of the uh, speaker from the radio showing the two capacitors in series. Both of those capacitors are admitting or passing the AF, the audio frequency. What I'm going to do next is couple up the Morse key and the battery and the meter again. I'm going to use the chokes as well, but I'm going to use the same bit of wire that is feeding from the radio to the speaker. And this is the circuit diagram as it looks now. So now I've got the Morse key connected as it was before to the meter through the battery um, with the chokes at each end and uh, I'm using this bit of wire which is also carrying the signal to the speaker and uh, again as I operate the key hope I'm getting that so you can see uh, we're, we're working through there now if I turn the radio on I've got the signal there. So, um, I think so, I'll just turn here now. so I can send uh, two signals of the same piece of wire. It wouldn't matter if the key was at this end and I was transmitting this way, uh, or as I am on, I'm 
both signals are going that way but it really doesn't matter uh, the system doesn't care and what's happening is the capacitors are blocking the DC current that would otherwise want to um, go through the speaker uh, this is the circuit diagram that we're working to by the way so I'll just show you that um, so you can see that the uh, radio signals are going through the wire via the capacitors and uh, the Morse code key is connected to the meter via the chokes. As I say I didn't want to have to go into details about the chokes but the chokes are providing a high impedance path to the audio frequency so that is the, the music or the speech can't get into the meter uh, so we don't see it on the meter and it can't get into the battery um, uh, the, th these are one Henry chokes so uh, they stop the audio signal and the capacitors of course block the DC what I've had to do I've had to put a little resistor across one of the capacitors So we could have um, uh, the, the music going in one direction, we could have a light bulb on here or we could have a, another frequency. As, as it is I've demonstrated that we can have DC or audio frequency but it's very common to use the same bit of wire for several frequencies and in fact uh, the way that you're watching this video at the moment you're almost certainly using something like this. This is a, an ADSL filter and what it is it's a little uh, bunch of uh, inductors and capacitors and this is used to filter out the uh, audio signal for your telephone and separate it from the high frequency signals that your computer uses. Uh, this is effectively what's there and there so you have one at each end of the line so that's using capacitors to block DC and to admit or pass uh, audio frequency or higher frequencies and if you get this combination of capacitor and inductance right then you can select the frequencies that you're going to admit um, I once made a, a television aerial amplifier and I had the, obviously the coax going from the back of the TV up to the loft and um, I sent uh, a low voltage 50 Hz AC signal uh, up the coax and to drive the power supply that was in the loft to drive the amplifier I had the UHF signal coming back down uh, the coax which went to the television and I also put a DC signal up the coax that I used to drive a relay so I could select two different aerials. So I was putting three signals through the coax, two in one direction, one in the other direction. So um, anyway, I hope you found that interesting, hopefully helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.